Glenn. Glenn, you can make it. Hey, Kurt, what's up, man? Hey, all right. All right, it's good to be here. I'm gonna see some of that fine art of yours. Oh, yeah, of course. All right. Uh, hey, I'll, I'll take you inside, tell you a little bit about uh, the house, about uh, how we got here. Uh, your trip was good, I assume? It was great, it was okay, great. Fantastic. All right. You know, uh, we bought this house in 2014. We uh, came from Alaska, and uh, I came down on a weekend in, in March and uh, saw 26 houses in one weekend. And uh, this is a house that we ended up buying and it's been our family home since uh, 2014 when we made that big trip from uh, Alaska. And oh, by the way, we moved in and uh, two weeks later I'm in Afghanistan. Oh my uh -huh. goodness. Yeah, that was, the, that was I guess the deal to get my family here to Texas. Wow, so you didn't even know that they were well, sitting here? I did, up but it, uh, it, was a, it was a rush. Um, they wanted me to actually come earlier, and I'm like, I can't move my family yet. Wow, this is a beautiful home, Kurt. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, my wife thank really you. does a great job keeping it together. All right, that's great. Um, so welcome, welcome to our home. Oh, wow. Uh, has, you know, rooms left and right. I think one of the best benefits was that uh, I had a his and hers bathroom. Uh, my daughter was on this side of the house. My son was on this side of the house, and they didn't need to share bathrooms anymore. Wow, that is so great, man! Uh, you I wanna, see some of your art here. Yeah, yeah we got the, the main room. This is one I just finished. Uh, uh, large, working on scale. Uh, this is the drive from Rock Springs, where I hunt for deer, out to uh, uh, Junction. Uh, it's about a two and a half hour drive. Wow. And then uh, this was the first sketch uh, of our backyard here. I'll show you the backyard. And uh, boy, I, I, my painting was rusty uh, when I first got here. <laughs> Here's my wife. Uh, she's uh, working in the kitchen. Ooh, nice kitchen. I love well, it. Well, yes, we, we put it to good work too. We like that <laughs> came here. All right, that's great. And uh, my wife loves the fact that she gave me some. She gave me some. Uh, things I had to look for in a house. And uh, side facing garage, no steps, master bath, uh, bedroom. Um, and the only steps are the steps that go out. Oh, she says no one behind us. We can't, she, if she, if I could find a house that had no one behind us. And uh, see, look, there's, there's no one behind us. We have nothing but this great Central Texas view. Uh, and all this, the stuff that we've added since uh, we got here in 2014. Oh yeah, and you got these wonderful dogs. I yeah. see too. Yeah, they. You know, we do. They have us, and we have them. <laughs> That's beautiful. I know you got rescues too. Oh, they are. And I know you have the egg. How do you like that? Oh, love this. <laughs> we love this grill. Uh, we smoke on it. You can grill on it. Uh, we, we love it, and. Uh, well, we must have had five or six grills that, you know, that uh, don't last a year. And we've had this since 2016, so awesome. Well, well thank you for, for having us here. And let's, let's go to the room where... Uh, yeah, let's go to the studio. The studio. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I was painting in the garage. And uh, the garage was fine. Uh, but uh, weather gets cold and I, I had to pull out a little space heater. And I was... I was still out there in the garage in my corridor, and uh, I'd been retired, uh, I don't know, maybe six months, and I started painting. I said, you know, I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to try to get some work done. What, what uh, branch of the service were you in? I was in the Army. And your rank? And uh, I retired job? as a lieutenant colonel. Um, had a number of great jobs. Uh, um, I really enjoyed my uh, last job in uh, last two jobs in the first calf. I, very unusual. I had uh, at least ten years in the first calf, uh, and that would be very unusual for a military police officer. You know, 2003 to 2008, I was in the first calf, and then they sent us to uh, Tradoc at uh, Fort, uh, Fort Monroe, Virginia. Um, I did that for two years, and then we went from there to Kansas. K 
Kansas the one year for Command General Staff College. I went from there to Alaska, and we were in Alaska for three years, albeit I was in uh, Afghanistan, you know, one of those, the middle year. Uh, I don't know that we'd ever seen it, that much snow. But they prepare you for the snow. Uh, we bought a snow blower and had a beautiful house and really enjoyed it. Kids enjoyed it. Um, told my wife there wasn't a chance that we were ever coming back to Fort Hood. Uh, and uh, I guess that's what everyone tells me, never say never. Because <laughs> there I am, I'm on assignment. And that go back to that story, you know, uh, we had to find a place to live. And this was going to be our, our forever home. And uh, knew that I was going to retire from Fort Hood. And found this house. And now, uh, I was working in the garage. And my wife's like, I want you to move into the front room and uh, make that your uh, studio. So nice. uh, I started uh, painting small... Uh, Eight by ten. Uh, my neighbor was moving, and I needed a place to put some of my work. And uh, um, he gave me uh, gave me this uh, corner cabinet, and we've stacked up a bunch of work in there. Um, you got a lot of work, I'm saying here. And, and imagine that all this. Uh, most of these paintings have been done since October. Uh, so I've been working um, almost nonstop since I try to work, paint every day and try to push myself and uh, vary my palette and really learn from some things. Uh, my wife, uh, I hadn't painted this on this painting for like two years, and she was cleaning up and uh, which painting? This one right here, this angel. Oh, this angel. And uh, it was beautiful. She, uh, well, it wasn't beautiful before, and I hadn't painted on it, and I hadn't done anything. I had, I had a uh, sketch, and uh, um, she said, "Well, you're not going to paint it. We'll get rid of it." And I went and collected it from the bin, and uh, said, "Well, I guess I'm going to paint it now," and and finished it. I started getting a much better feel for paint again. Well, that's great. You know what? Let me. Uh... Let me invite you to have a seat in your house. <laughs> uh, so this is great. Um, so I was wondering, you know, we're with the Veteran Suicide Prevention Channel. We have a festival that's called the Austin Veterans Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. We uh, really push that festival as uh, a way for veterans to find healing through the arts. Mm -hmm. And they practice all kinds of arts. I mean, singing, acting, dancing. Uh, I, I'm interested. Do you uh, do you find therapeutic value in painting? Uh, well, uh, it is very centering, and, and yes, uh, I do. Not not necessarily in the um, emotional catharsis that 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 you might uh, you might think. Um, I did steer away from military um, centered uh, art uh, in my retirement uh, maybe as a mental health choice um, and I did start uh, let's see uh, 2019 in 2019, I started uh, some EMDR, uh, working on uh, some of the uh, memories that uh, were bothering me from uh, deployments. Um, I didn't realize that they were affecting my life and my life with my wife. And uh, we were working on it and she said, I, babe, I, I think you really need to see someone, talk to someone. and. Um, I started uh, working on EMDR. Um, uh, EMDR. Um, Did you find that effective? Movement, uh, dissociative. Mm -hmm. um, I did. I found it very, 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 very helpful. Um, it's so much so that I, I highly recommend it to other people um, for any number of reasons. Um, I think it helped me to be less apathetic. Um, 
less numb about a number of a number of things. Um, I didn't realize how calloused um, some of those experiences made me. I didn't, but uh, here I get to paint every day, and uh, and I turn my focus, uh, my work. Um, into being able to see some things and uh, be able to uh, spend time here in the house and produce things that uh, I intend to sell, um, but record. And uh, what I can tell you is that uh, the realization is that uh, this the ability to paint is a really a gift from God, and I'm meant to show other people and to glorify that gift from God. Um, so it, it's really a gift that has been given to me and I'm going to try to do my very best to uh, give it to other people. Now, now I understand from previous conversations that we had, didn't you um, and actually do some painting um, before you be joined yeah, yeah, the military? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was... Uh, Okay, so uh, I studied art in college. I have a bachelor of, um, bachelor of Arts in Studio Art from American University. It happens to be in a top-rated uh, figurative school. And uh, I really struggled when I first got there uh, to find a place to fit in, to me really fit in. And um, I was recruited for wrestling and uh, I always Kid, my parents. If I ever found an art school with wrestling, I was going there. <laughs> so uh, I got a second chance. Uh, I got to go to this school. I got to be in the art department. I got to get wow. a degree mm. uh, with my scholarship, uh, wrestling scholarship. I was a, a weird fit for the art program for sure, um, but um, hard work. Um, uh, I ended up yeah, winning a senior prize, a prize, uh, the Van Swinderunum Prize for the um, senior displaying the most professional outlook. And uh, the funny thing is it's 1992, so I had already planned on joining the reserves and uh, going to OCS. Uh, that was my plan. And um, I said, oh, and then I'll come back and uh, go to grad school, go back into painting. Uh, well, uh, I enlisted uh, right as I graduated from college and I went to Fort uh, Leonard Wood and did my uh, nine weeks basic training and boom, I was, <laughs> I was then at Officer Candidate School uh, for the ride of my life. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your service, Kurt. Uh, well, thank you. I mean, who knew? I mean, who knew that? Uh, geez, uh, graduate from college. Now you're a specialist, then sergeant, and now you're you're at OCS. Uh, what a challenge! And, and you uh, you you have been in combat. Yes, sir. Yeah, I went. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I. The Army has taken me a lot of places. So I was in the reserves for a couple of years. I taught, I taught art. I was a high school teacher and, and coach. Um, and then 9-11 happened. I was a company commander and uh, up in Pennsylvania and uh, called to active duty that day and did not, um, essentially didn't leave active duty. My last day of teaching school was September 11th. And uh, the rest is history. So I came back on active duty. 2004, I was in Iraq. Uh, 2000, yeah, 2004, I was in Iraq with the 1st Cavalry Division. We had that brief break. And then I was back in uh, 2006 through 2008 for the surge. And, for the surge. Uh, the surge. Well, the surge was the... Was the... Uh, 15 month uh, deployment. Uh, we had, we all had 90 days tacked on to our year deployment, uh, which was harder on my family um, than I realized. Um, and we were in 
backed up to Sodder City and we're getting mortared all the time and it was a it was a pretty stressful yes it was a pretty stressful time that uh, 06 08 well you know uh, we really do thank you for your service uh, um, you went at a time when uh, I guess it's it's never an easy time for us to serve as veterans mm. you know as a military personnel because there's just so much happening and when you're in harm's way you're in harm's way and but you know you you did your duty to your country and so we so appreciate that but here really what we're here to, to look at is some of your art this is yeah, yeah. this this is where you uh put oh yeah well so this is uh this is uh, my palette i have a glass palette mm -hmm. and uh one of the key things is is to uh, uh have a palette where i can mix the color um and clean it up and change it and and keep working and uh um that's a significant change because uh, you know the other way that you would paint would be um, with, you know, with a traditional palette and oh, yeah. uh, you know a traditional palette uh, you get only so many variety of colors with your own brush um, and this is good for painting outdoors plein air painting yeah. but um, Largely now, I take that, uh, I have a smaller glass palette I take with me. Um, I'll just leave that out. Okay, look at that palette, it's beautiful. You can tell you, it's been used for sure. Yeah, it has. You just taught me something about uh, glass palettes. I never knew that as an artist myself. Oh, well, yeah, here, look, uh, one of the things, one of the best things is uh, you don't really realize that uh, how important um, having the clean surface to paint on uh, really does allow you uh, to change um, to change the colors that you're putting down there so uh, and we I don't have black uh, that's not black I don't have black on my palette uh, I usually don't have green because it get becomes so muddy and I'll make green every time if I need a green um, so um, usually, um, this is, uh, what is called Utrecht yellow, um, and we're going to take Utrecht yellow and just a hint of this, uh, cobalt blue right here, and it's, it's not even a, it's not even a dollop, you, you see that, uh, just yeah. a, a pinch, and as I, uh, turn this, uh, color over, um, the yellow, and the, this is going to make a pretty dark green, and... Mm. Oh, that's nice. I see. And uh, because the greens are ubiquitous, right? They're mm -hmm. they're everywhere, and so the color, the the depth of a green, can change by the kind of blue that you put into the yellow. Uh, and uh, that that's pretty gray. That's a pretty gray green. Uh, mm -hmm. The way you have it there um, to lift those up. Um, you know, we could pit, pull in a little bit of the Naples yellow, um, which would uh, smooth that out some. You notice that that becomes a little bit more like a grass green with the Naples mm -hmm. yellow. Yes. Oh, yeah, I love that green. You see yeah. how that, that picks up. Mm -hmm. now, you can't get that. Um, you got to pull from the other colors. Mix and then... Um, really think out the, the painting. And so this glass palette really helps much the more with The glass that? palette, uh, f well, from the, the training that I received at school, uh, yes, you'll, you'll find that uh, you put it on a palette where you can clean it up and move it and, and really attack the color um, because the coolness of the color changes uh, um, changes how you uh, approach any, any of the paintings. Um, I'm looking at this painting here. This is interesting. Have you have you given this a title? I love the perspective. From well, this painting. this this is the uh, Fredericksburg Airfield. Um, so uh, it's the beginning, uh, and you know you say, "Oh, aren't you done yet?" I said, "Well, I have some. Um, this is still pretty rough through here, and I'm going to work out um, some depth." Uh, 
but now um, just keep attacking certain areas uh, as the paint dries. Now, wet on wet, uh, wet on wet causes some other problems. It's uh, if you've worked wet on wet, you'll see that sometimes a color goes on top of another color perfectly, beautifully, it sits on top of the other. Other times, you'll put that color on top of the other wet color and it becomes a muddy mess. <laughs> I have been there because I, I like to paint with oil and uh, you know, I, I haven't had any formal training, but you know, you just have to take, I call it a, a cooling out period. Yeah, you, you know, let areas rest, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so um, some things will uh, not, <laughs> uh, yellows take a long time to uh, dry mm. and uh, Certain blues, um, I have a mentor and uh, she uh, told me to take the color black off my, uh, um, off my palette and it's not on there. So if you see a dark color here, it's, uh, it's usually a, a Prussian blue mixed with a lizard and crimson or another color. So uh, what, what inspires you? your work. I noticed that you do a lot of landscapes. Is there a particular inspiration? Oh, for landscapes? Yes. Um, well, I, I like to capture the beauty of nature. The, those scenes that, you're, that you see, that you just pause and you say, well, you know, geez, I wish I had, I wish I had that again. Uh, I wish I could see that again. Um, uh, my son went to Moab and he's, he sent uh, to Utah to see Delicate Arch and uh, he sent me some photos and out of those photos, you know, I did that. Um, this And this, you know, when we said, hey, I've really only been painting full time since September, October. And then I did that piece and then I did a series, a couple of other pieces you know, to, uh, to continue to hone the skills that go along with the images. And, um, I love that one, the meal. What, what is that one there? Oh, this is the, uh, hmm, the granary. The um, granary. This is across from Green Sausage House. Um, and this was also a challenge for me. It's one of those, uh, pieces where I said, Hey, let's, uh, that, that image I have, I have to get in, I have to do that image. And uh, I took some sketches, I took some photos, I, I kind of had an idea. And this also changed some ways that I was looking at my own work. I mean, really dynamically changed. Hey, you really can do, you know, there are some things that you can do and some things you can't do. And you need to do more of this. <laughs> That's nice work. Oh, uh, thank you. Nice work, Kurt. I, I love uh, how, you, and especially when you take into the fact that I know that you mix your own colors, <laughs> and you mix that metallic looking gray like that, and I, you know, I just you know, love. Like, yeah, it's not. It's not detail. silver, right? So, no, uh, it's not. Um, but you make it. It looks silver because of the way you play the light. I think. Uh, and this was a uh, concrete plant in uh, Mississippi, and. Uh, you know, there would have been a time when I would have been hesitated to put any power lines in. Um, you know, not record any power lines. Can you turn this way a little bit? I, I've yeah. seen it. Oh, great. That's fantastic. And in this case, you know, I saw some other artists who solved that problem. And I, and I said, well, well, what if I painted the sky and left a gap where the where the line would be, you know, like, oh, well, that's, that's a solution. That is, a, you know, so you have some visual problems that you're solving. Um, and uh, there's a balance between being too loose, you know, too painterly mm -hmm. and too tight. Um, and I try to find that balance. Um, I had done some painting in uh, Boone, North Carolina. And I painted, oh, like for three hours on this large piece. And then I had some extra time. I had like 30 minutes. You know, in 30 minutes time, I painted this. And, oh, geez, uh, I felt better about capturing this, the, 
the the smoke the the mist coming off the mountains and about this group of logs that I did about this huge mountain scene that I painted. <laughs> and, I, and I realized, okay, the balance. I have to find a balance in between Each working thing. too hard on an image and letting it go. Um, and and I know that other artists have that same, you know, how long do I work on something? Can I come back to it? Do I need to come back to it? Uh, and having this studio mm -hmm. uh, and a place, I, I can take a piece of work off the easel and put it aside, let it dry and cut and, and work. And I'll tell you, I, I try to have more than one canvas going at, at a time. Oh, I can't do that. That's interesting. Um, and that allows, you know, having one working and one drying. Yes. Um, doesn't let me waste any paint that's on the, on the uh, glass. Oh, that is um, fantastic. And, and You're right. One of the things is, uh, is that, I'm sorry. One of the things that happens is that, uh, you know, at the end of each, at the end of each, uh, when I go to clean the palette up again, uh, all that refuse, all that paint that didn't get used, gets a skin on it, and it becomes really difficult to paint with, right? So it looks like a monster in that jar. It, it, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be. Um, and uh, yeah, when I'm when that's full, I, I, I'll just get rid of that. But uh, yeah, I can thank Alabama what I, Alabama Sweet Tea Company for this jar. <laughs> well, I don't think they want to serve any more tea in that. No, no. But no. Uh, what you're serving up from it is just is just amazing. I uh, your art is is inspiring. It's a, it's amazing. I love like I'm looking at this in in the camera right now, and the blueness of the skies and. The, gradu the graduation of the colors down to the uh, horizon and and then the, you know it's just it's so visually complete it's funny we we camped right by here we um we bought a little camper this year you know at the end of this little covid thing we said hey let's let's get uh let's go out and travel we just we like to camp but we we're getting older so we like Hey, let's try to get a camper. So we got a camper, a little, a little camper, and uh, our maiden voyage was to Fredericksburg, was to Fredericksburg, and we stayed at the little uh, Lady Bird Johnson uh, Municipal Park, um, and uh, we we really enjoyed our trip there. And it was just two days, three days, and the dogs were with us, and uh, there was a dog park that went mm -hmm. up along the uh, airfield and when we were walking along the airfield I said oh we just gotta uh, capture that we and uh, we really want to capture all the uh, all the places we've been now my wife and I we, we plan on seeing every state park in Texas we're gonna try oh that's gonna take you a long time <laughs> it is, it is. Now, particularly since there are you know 13 in the northeast corner mm -hmm. but we went to atlanta state park uh, right around the top of our anniversary and it was beautiful it, it should be kind of helpful that i find it interesting your wife is also a veteran huh she is and you know when i first met her i didn't know that i i think it was uh i think we were dating six months before i found out that <laughs> she had she had served in in the uh in the army wow uh, she was a vet tech um well, by the time I met her, she was a nurse, so, um... Well, you know, I, I just had to say I want to thank you on behalf of our veterans for allowing us to come into your space and see what you do and for you, you know, sharing some of your art, your home, your your trade secrets even. Ah, uh, yeah, trade secrets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, mastery is something you have to pass on to other people because, um... I'm going to die one day and need to pass that on to someone. Well, you know, your art will live on. And, and hopefully, you know, what you do and who you are will also live on in this video that we'll be <laughs> sharing on our channel. Okay. Long after either one of us are here. <laughs> well, you know, uh, okay, one, one more little story for you. So uh, I was still, um, I was still, 
painting when I first met my wife. Uh, I had gotten divorced after that first uh, deployment and uh, met my wife and I was painting and oh, geez, I was so angry and I was painting and I didn't take care of my uh, brushes or my surfaces and I just stuck my brushes in a jar and, and left them and uh, geez, I came back. I, my wife didn't touch them. Uh, we got married. And she didn't touch them. I got back from that deployment, and they were one solid mass. Ooh. So I lost oh thirty brushes, which is uh, you know it's uh, it's an artist weapon. So you know you got to treat your you got to clean your weapon. You got to clean your brushes. So I now take good care of my brushes and uh, and clean them. And uh, my wife doesn't well, we were we were reminded about when I didn't take care of uh, something that was important to this trade do you have like sometimes I notice I do do you have favorite brushes for a while for a period of time <laughs> for certain things okay so uh, geez I, you know when I went to art school you know you you don't you don't even think about brushes but uh, you have um, and they do different things of course right um, if you were to watch uh, Bob Ross, uh, you know, he might say, Oh, look, you have to have the fan brush. You have to have the fan brush to make your happy little trees. <laughs> and uh, I find this more troubling than... than <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, but, um, and uh, I just washed my brushes, so uh, I really... Um, I really like these uh, filberts. Uh, filberts hold uh, take on a, a load of paint really well. And a filbert is a is a long uh, is a long fibered uh, brush with a uh, trimmed and, and rounded head. Mm -hmm. um, different, albeit from a, a round, um, which has some some particular uses. Uh, another smaller round. Um, filberts are very, very good. Um, and, uh, you know, um, surprisingly, I never, I didn't use a, uh, um, I, I, I've been looking for more filberts. I keep these, I kind of guard these and make <laughs> you sure. You guard that, them? <laughs> well, I, I try to uh, clean them up and make sure, because they do exactly what I need them to okay. do. When I need to lay just a small amount of paint or mm -hmm. or a long piece, I can load up a pretty good amount of paint on it and and use it to to make those things. Or you know, because a filbert is angled the way it is, you can make uh, uh, tick marks or strokes. Um, you can do the same with a with a with a bright. Um, you know the, the brushes have different uses, and I, I particularly like these these filberts. Uh, and um, but they have you know they have different uses, and yeah, I will uh, take good care. I take <laughs> take good care of my brushes now, um, uh, and it's more than tongue in cheek because I have I have mistreated my brushes in the past, <laughs> and I'm not going to do that again. Well, that's good. Well. Uh, I thank you for um, for this time with you, Kurt. Yes, sir. And um, you know we we hope to see your work in uh, one of our upcoming exhibits for Ava Fest 2022 is coming. And um, and like I was telling you, we got a, another special project that we're working on, and you would certainly be a great candidate for that. Well, I appreciate it. I, I, you know what? Uh, I won't stop working. So. Uh, um all these paintings got to find a home yes. um, and uh, I will just keep working. I try to paint uh, three or four paintings a week. So uh, we're going to have plenty. We're going to have plenty for any show that you need, sir. So I got in contact. I sent some work to Awesome Galleries and um, I continued to work. I didn't get any response after I sent them my first portfolio. Uh, 
I said, hey, I've been working some more. I, I persevered, I sent them another email. And they said, well, that, the gal that you talked to is no longer with us. And uh, we're pretty busy right now. But since, I, since that person I talked to um, had worked with the veterans group, and I had said that I was a veteran in, my, uh, in the body of my artist's reference, uh, they said, we'd like you to uh, make contact with the uh, Austin Veterans Art uh, Festival people, which put me in contact with uh, Miss Estrada of the Estrada Galleries. And uh, I sent her three, three paintings and said, hey, I'm, I'm a painter and uh, I'm interested in showing my work. And she told me that uh, she was stepping down from the role as curator. She loved my work, but uh, she passed me on to you. And uh, that is the beginning of our now lifelong friendship uh, and the future of uh, uh, our relations with uh, veterans who are artists and um, helping them um, find their way in the art field. Yeah, we are so glad that you did that, that you contacted us. There are a lot of veterans that are very talented. You know, when we are a lot of times when we are serving other people are out here in the world getting ahead growing in the things that they do art and all kinds of things and so that's what we're fighting for we want to provide these kind of opportunities we want you to continue your growth as an artist you have some phenomenal skills and they're just going to get better and we will always, you can count on AvaFest to have a place for you every year oh, moving you. up, okay? Really, really look forward to it. Thank you. God Thanks, bless man. you, Kurt. Thank Glenn, hey, you're welcome at home anytime. We're so glad that you could come to our home here in Belton, Texas, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. You, you know, have a safe trip back to uh, Round Rock, okay? Oh, thank you. And you know what, uh, Kurt? I had such a great time. I learned a lot. I learned some things. You, you're always learning some things. Thank you so much for sharing with our audience. And uh, I think that you're just tremendously talented. And appreciate and, it. And we have see you come you. back on a better day, and we'll have some brisket. Hey, man! I love brisket on that egg. Hey, <laughs> Peace, brother. Yeah.